BSA has recently, last week, I think, launched this new index, right? And I think uh, that's a great start because once you start listing, you know, it puts peer pressures on others. So if Infosys, Wipro, ITC, all those kind of companies who are very conscious about, you know, what they do, once they start, you know, listing their green quotient, there will be a lot of others, investors will start putting pressures, all stakeholders of all kinds will start putting pressures, whether it's an NGO, whether it's employees, whether it's investors. And eventually, these things will start counting. I mean, I think over time, you know, we need to bring in another kind of accounting system. It has to be an, a green accounting system where you account for the carbon that you emit. I mean, today, it's really not, nobody's bothered, you know, whether it's coming from coal or it's coming from, we don't catch, account for the environmental impacts in our performances. I think those green accounting standards will come in very soon. If not tomorrow, in the next five years, it will definitely come in. And at that point, you know, companies who are already reporting, who are already very transparent, will be very high up there. We're doing a lot of R&D on daylighting. How do you ensure that there is excellent daylighting and we don't use artificial lights during daytime? We're also working on very disruptive new cooling technologies. You know, how do you cool the building? Because if you see, air conditioning today consumes 50% of all the energy in our campuses. And if that is to be tackled, and air conditioning was invented only 100 years ago, right? So what are people doing before that? So we're asking those kind of questions. We're try trying to see how we can do cooling, not just air conditioning, in low-cost low manner. Or can you, is it possible to even avoid cooling in, or artificial mechanical cooling in certain weather conditions? ultimate goal is to go 100%. Uh, till date, we have um, managed to reach 20% over the last two years. And most of these projects are wind and hydro projects which are off-site, which are not within our campuses, but you know, it's where the river is running, the run of the river projects, or where the wind is very high, say, in the mountain passes. These are areas where we have basically engaged entrepreneurs to set up a concept of a green utility for us, right? And so they're setting up these power plants which will put in finally green electrons in, into the national grid and we can draw it out here. There, there could be multiple ways to uh, interpret that. Uh, one is, you know, if you are working in a building which is daylit, I mean, for example, you know, there's lots of research which shows that, you know, it improves productivity. So of course, you know, I have a very sustainable building but I also have a higher productivity and therefore the company is going to do better. The other thing is even in the branding to attract talent. I mean, you know, you find, you know, if you showcase that you're a more conscious company, you know, you care for the environment, you you have a real dedicated team towards, you know, the social, uh, social and the environmental aspects, you are able to attract better talent. And I think eventually, long term, all of these things go and add up to becoming more sustainable is better, even in terms of productivity, even in terms of financial performance.